You are listening to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss our RC adventures. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss the ups and downs of the new RC Flyer. Join your hosts, Michael and Jay, as they take flight at the park. Now on with the show. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast. I'm Michael, and uh, unfortunately this week, Jay and Mike are still in Texas. But joining me this uh, week for our Best in the West trip, I have... Your favorite, Spence. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Spence. And joining us as well is... Barry. How you doing? We're doing good. So Spencer and Barry are uh, my turban buddies, and uh, we're all headed out to the Best in the West Jet Rally. Going to be in Button Willow, uh, California, I think. Just finished loading the trailer. We're all uh, ready to go. I think, Spence, you got a couple airplanes back there. What are you bringing? I do. I'm going to bring the F-16 we've talked about working on. Well, actually, both F-16s that we talked about on previous podcasts. The little foamies, you and I both, Mike, are bringing our little EDFs. That's correct. Hopefully, yep. there'll be some time out there to buzz those around without getting uh, ran over. And then I'm also bringing the uh, bigger turbine one and Excellent. the Ultra Flash. Ultra Flash. That's a real fast one. It is. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, and then, Barry, you've uh, got two interesting airplanes. You also have an Ultra Flash. Yes, I do. Ultra Flash. Twinsies. Uh, twinsies, just uh, <laughs> different color schemes, same Correct. motors, similar setups, so forth, in certain ways. And it's actually your fault I bought mine. Well, sure. Well, that's yeah, usually the way it is. works, it, that's, Yeah, actually it was. And stuff. So I'm like, well, if I'm going to get one. He stuff, buys one and one. then says, well, now you have to have one. Now I can't fly alone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Why do I have a feeling that's going to come back and bite me in oh, the butt? Oh, it's gonna it's gonna happen. You know it is. We're you know Spencer and I are bad influences on you. Yes, you, know. you are. I'm yeah. sure. I'm not looking Jay forward to it, this right? week. <laughs> yeah, I already had this issue once before. So. Oh yeah. yeah, and also I'm bringing my uh, yellow aircraft F-15, which only have a few flights on it. So uh, we'll uh, see how it goes, and I'm pretty sure it goes pretty good. That's been flying good so far. Yeah, so far. Had a few issues on the first uh, few. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, uh, you know, landing gear issue and some brake issues and so forth. So That's part about buying a buying a pre-owned airplane. Yeah, right. so yeah. I've had three flights on it so far. It flies real well, but, you know, when I come in for a landing, uh, first time was a brake issue. And uh, the second, actually the third time was uh, a landing gear issue it coming off going off the runway and then hitting a little bump and actually uh, broke the landing gear. So it must have been had a burr or a crack or something at prior to after I fixed it. I got it all done. And also I'm bringing a brand new hobby, uh, what is it, uh, the Free Wing Motion RC L39. Oh, that's right. You yeah, just got that in so, the mail uh, today, actually, right? Yeah, actually yeah. I started working on it a little bit tonight. Uh by the time we got done finishing up the loading up all our things, I took it home, tried to get a few, you know, about an hour or so of uh, work done onto it, getting things together. And and you said you I, pretty much got it ready, right? Well, a couple I, more I, linkages and the gyros, the gyros pretty much programmed for the most part. My radio is for the most part. Uh, there's some linkages I got to put on there, uh, some centering of the servos, uh, a few more screws. So basically, I just let it uh, glue up a little bit. So, uh, so how long would you say from the time that you pull it out of the box? How much time would you say it takes to put one together? Two hours. Well, with the gyro, this this uh, Aura Eight gyro, probably about a yeah two hours total. Yeah, well, that's not the, bad. The, the main part is trying to program the radio in the gyro because you have to do it all in the computer, right? In a PC computer, so you got to set up your gains and your your flight controls and and uh, movements for the different uh, flight modes and so forth. So, but 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 putting the airplane together is actually probably a thirty minute hour. thirty minute process. Yeah, half right? an hour is mechanically things on it is half an hour. Just a right, few right. like three items you need to glue about probably about eighteen or so screws to put in it, and the rest of it is just programming the radio and the gyro. Right. Well, as we were uh, loading the trailer, I got a couple glimpses at it, and I have to say, uh, it looks good. Yeah, it's very it does. good. I it hope if it flies yeah. as good as it looks, then we're going to be in. You're going to be styling. Yeah, from the, uh, the reviews and stuff that the people that have been testing on uh, Motion RC, uh, they've been uh, really raving about it. So I'm really looking forward to test flying it. I'm going to be test flying it probably in the next day or two when we get out to the best in the west. 
as soon as I can uh, get out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it flies anything like my F-15 and uh, my A-10, I mean, both of those are free-wing products. So uh, I know that, you know, those products fly really, really well, and uh, this is their latest and greatest. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, it'll, it'll fly great. Yep. I, now, I have... I have faith it'll probably be a good good flyer. <laughs> Crossing my fingers. Real yeah. quick, Barry, I, I I haven't had a chance to take a look at the box or look at it much. So, how big is it? What is uh, what size EDF is it, and what battery does it use? So it's an eighty millimeter uh, fan unit. I think it has like a, I think it's a sixteen eighty or like a seventeen hundred kV motor in there. It takes a uh, six thousand. Uh, actually, a 6S 5000 milliamp pack. Oh, that's convenient. I yeah. got a few of those. So yeah, if it flies we good, all I'm got a few of those. So hopefully it goes good, and I'll convince the two of you and let you guys fly it, and maybe we'll <laughs> have three of them going. Yeah, yeah how I'm much sure. was it? Uh, so it's 350 bucks. It's the uh, the what is it? The ARF Plus or Plug and Play? Yeah, actually, oh, cool. it's the yeah, Plug the and Play. play. Yeah. Right. So yeah. It, all you got to do is just add your receiver, put your battery in there, put it together, and it's ready to go. Nice. So, yeah, the ARF Plus, I think, is the one where you add your own uh, motor and, and fan. Right, Sounds and that's right. what you did on your F-15. That is correct, yeah. Okay. So I bought the F-15 because I already had the 90-millimeter uh, the, uh, motor. Uh, but this one, I think, uh, your L-39 is the plug-and-play. So. so I think it's right around what? What is it, 40, 40 inches wingspan or yeah, something of the right. sort? Yeah. About 50 inches long, something like that. The typical 80 millimeter right. uh, fan. So, so they kind of compare it to the Avante. So right. Just they said it's an Avante and a, a scale a scale skin. look. Yeah, it was a scale scale. That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. It looks good. I think it uses the same power system, ESC, uh, all that stuff, and then uh, they just put it in the L39 body. Yeah. So they've had they've had really good success with the Avante. It's really super fast and now the Avante isn't that the yellow one that you see all correct. the time? With yes. The, yes. It's got correct. the it's got the wing fences on it. That is correct. Right. Okay. So and I'm they actually the just released line. one uh, a red version. The red version. Oh, so they just came out with okay. a red version. And for I was wanting that. Correct. But the they are pre ordering it, and I didn't get in on that pre order. Right. So. And they the had L39 had already pre ordered. They were pre ordering still right now. Right. right. Uh, actually, uh, as of about a week ago, they were still pre ordering, but they still had availability. So I went ahead and just clicked and then clicked my PayPal. And, <laughs> just know, click, and click, just click, went. and I have an airplane coming. Click, 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 click. And then so I got it tonight. And that's fantastic. That's cool. So I'm yeah. pretty excited. So. And then you have plans for it too, though. You're not going to keep it in the regular color. You're going to. No. Paint it? I'm going to paint it. So okay. Mike and I are going to go ahead and get the testers paint out and uh, <laughs> spray right. it up a little bit. We're doing in a Russian camo look, so it's like a, a darker green and a lighter green and then a, Russian a flag. yellow uh, tip tips. tanks yes. and, and on, on all the surfaces, you know, all the tips. A couple of Russian stars and you're yeah, good to go. Yeah, Russian stars and uh, a number on the side, and it's kind of a grayish blue on the bottom. So it's going to look really good. Yeah, uh, it should be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Spencer, t- I mean uh, Barry, told me he didn't. He had never painted foam before, so no. he called me up, wanted to <laughs> kind of go through that. I'm like, uh, what do we use? So I guess the tester thing is the deal. I think we did a podcast not too long ago on uh, on painting foam, and you basically use the tester's acrylic. It's kind of a water based paint, but it, it, it's not difficult. Um, you know, I, I've done it before, painted a couple of foam airplanes. So we'll get Barry all hooked up on his new. Uh, Russian color scheme, I think. Make it look good. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's an early morning start for us tomorrow. We uh, are headed out like at the crack of dawn, right? 5 a.m. 5 a.m. departure. Yeah, 5 a.m. departure. So looking forward to sleep. eight. <laughs> I know. And an eight-hour drive on top of that. So um, uh, I'm pretty excited. This is my first jet rally, and I really appreciate you guys inviting me out. So it'll be good to see uh, turbines, you know. And uh, this is totally new for me, so it, it, it'll be worth it. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So thanks for inviting me. Yeah, no problem. Well, uh, let's uh, get some sleep here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll check in with you when we uh, pull into the best of the West. How's that? Sounds good, boys. All right. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Park Fire Podcast. I'm Michael. We're uh, on location in California. I'm here with my good friend. Spencer from Phoenix. How's it going, guys? It's going great. We are at the best in the West. 
uh, Jet Rally. We are. Which is amazing. We're here. Um, we made it. Yes, we did. We uh, jumped in the car. 499 miles later. <laughs> and a couple of gas stops. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> restroom here. breaks. Uh, but we're here. And uh, it is in Button Willow, California. And it is from, let's see, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And everybody kind of goes home on Sunday, I think. Well. Yeah, exactly. I think that people need that time to get back home. you right. up, Pack up all their stuff. So... Sunday is usually kind of a dud unless you live locally. You right. can get away with flying some, but right. uh, Saturday is kind of like the, the grand finale, and you'll see a lot of people Saturday packing up, and mm-hmm. it'll be at half ghost town. There you go. So yeah. Now, uh, we have a tent. Uh, it's pretty much right on the flight line, and uh, it's great. We've got a couple of tables set up, and uh, we brought a couple of airplanes out. Uh, as far as the turbine goes, you brought the F-16 and a Flash, I think. I did. This is the first public debut of the F-16, even though it's almost like kissing your sister. It's so ugly right now because it needs a paint job still. And uh, my main landing gear is stuck down, which is also embarrassing. But, uh, you know, I'm out here to fly airplanes, and yep. that's fine. Good. Yeah. And uh, we also came out here with Barry, and he brought the uh, F-15 and his flash as well. Yeah, I think. so we so. both have our flashes, and then uh, Barry has his 15. I have my 16. and Yeah. yeah. And we've uh, we've actually got a couple of flights in, I think. Uh, Barry, man, he was just ready to go with his F-15, man. He pulled that out of the trailer and ran out to the flight line. Yeah, he's pretty <laughs> stoked about having that airplane. <laughs> so he uh, he actually got it around, and uh, I think we'll talk to him a little bit later about how you know how it's going with him. Uh, I brought out some foamies. We brought the F-16s out to fly around. We did. And uh, I brought my uh, Motion. Well, it's a free wing. I bought it from Motion, but it's a free wing uh, F-15, so 90 millimeter F-15. And uh, we got one or two flights in today with that. It was good. Yeah. Runs off a six cell. I feel a little embarrassed flying around a foamy with uh, all these big expensive jets, but um, I guess I'll blend right in, right? I just well, there is a foamy here that can't be any longer than two <laughs> feet long. So yeah. I think it's yeah, a at least 65, 65 millimeter yes. red. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of the guys in uh, in our little group from Phoenix, uh, he brought a little foamy too, and I think it's a 65 millimeter F-18, and uh, he was out buzzing the skies with it. So it uh, seems that they don't really care what's up there as long as you stay out of everybody else's way. So you know what's funny about that F-18, Mike, is he, um, Kenny has that little F- F-18, uh-huh. and he's having the same exact problem you have. Or had with your F-18. Oh, with the Star Max? Because it's a ground hugger. Yeah. He'll be going down the runway at 50 <laughs> miles an hour, full up elevator, and just keeps trucking. <laughs> it won't ever come off the ground? Never. I had that same problem. I don't know what the problem is with that, but something no, li- about where the CG is. He took it out is. there, and he ran it all the way down the runway. And the uh, I don't know if you had covered it yet, but the runway here is kind of like an abandoned full-scale airport. Right. So there's like 4,000 feet of runway out here, and if the 16-millimeter <laughs> foamy can't get off in 4,000 feet of runway, it's time it's to make some It's some high-density high density altitude, yes. I think. <laughs> well, this is fantastic. we got a good weekend planned. Um, let's go fly, shall we? Let's go let's get some it. fly. All right, perfect. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Park Fire Podcast. I'm Michael, and with me today is... Barry, how's it going? Welcome to the podcast, Barry. Uh, how you doing, Mike? It's still uh, we're going really good. We are at the Best in the West Jet Rally here in Buttonwillow, uh, California. It's Friday uh, afternoon, and we have seen some amazing models here. They are truly amazing. What was your best? Uh, what, what do you think is the best model out here, Barry? You know, I like that BVM huge F eighteen. I, I think that's the most impressive one I've seen uh, today and yeah. yesterday. So uh, Bobolet Models has a, uh, what do you say, it's a one-sixth scale. Uh, I think it's a little bit bigger now, maybe like a one-fifth. I mean, things right. huge. I think it's like a one, <clears throat> yeah, probably about a one-fifth scale on it. So it's a one-fifth scale uh, F-18, and it has a huge 310 uh, turbine in it, I think, right? So yeah. Just one turbine. Usually F-18s have two, two, but, you know, to simplify things, they just go ahead and on those bigger planes, you just want to put one big engine in it. And, and it, it makes things amazing. really light. It flies amazing. 
Yeah, the thing just uh, floats around. It's kind of like a, a little foamy almost. <laughs> it does look like a little foamy. But a lot more expensive. Yes, a <laughs> lot more expensive. I think there's like 20 grand in that thing. Really? Yeah, with That's all the electronics and the motor. And uh, BVM makes a fantastic model. Uh, it comes plug and play uh, from them. All you got to do is just input your radio in there. I think just the receiver. And your uh, engine, I think it's all ready to go. Everything's plumbed, wired, ready for you. It's a turnkey airplane, and and but you know, of course, you're paying the money for it. Now, the when you say uh, ready to, it's not a bind and fly, right? It's a what they what they call it's a quick build or a it's actually already built, right? Yeah, it's all built, painted. You go ahead and um, pick out your color scheme. Uh, they have their choice of servos. They have their choice of uh, electronics that you want to put other than your receiver. Um, right. I don't know if your batteries are already installed in it from the factory. They put their own in there, or if you, that's something that you have to request them to put in there, uh, your choice, how many milliamps, so forth, or you put that in after the fact when you put your 20-channel a receiver in there and then drop your whatever engine but the guy said that if you want them to drop an engine for you they'll come right out of the factory and put a 310 or whatever engine that right. uh, is for that airplane right but you know of course you know money's king over there and they'll do whatever you need <laughs> <laughs> they'll do whatever you pay them to do actually exactly <laughs> so. well i think the best airplane i think i've seen fly so far other than that f-18 has got to be the b-2 bomber mm. That B-2 yeah. bomber is amazing. We have a I, – I don't know if it's a scratch belt or if it's a kit or – I think really that's sure. a scratch belt because I haven't seen any kits from any of the jet manufacturers out there, like you yeah. know, Jet Legend, BVM, right. uh, and so forth. So uh, he probably just blew it up, a set of plans, like a smaller set, and just modified everything. So it's definitely experimental and not a, not a kit. Uh, well, it truly nothing. is amazing. Oh, the yeah, wingspan perfect. on that thing is about 14 feet. I mean, it is massive. Uh, it's got two big turbines in it. And, uh, uh, I don't remember what it was and stuff they had. It was like two, maybe 140s in it, uh, oh, twin engine ones. So, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, I think it was like two, two twin 140, King Tech 140s, because the guy that owns it is Barry from... From King, King Tech, Tech yeah. and so he he's a supplier of all the King Tech engines. Yeah, he's a, a pretty requested guy out here. I've seen him running around uh, with his little uh, unit to check all these guys' <laughs> turbines. Everybody has a standing in line to talk to that guy. So oh yeah, he's amazing. You know, Spence had uh, a few yeah. little things with yeah. his spooling up of the engine, and uh, my flash had a little bit of flames coming out. It's been that way since I bought it. Uh, the engine, so he kind of made some adjustments to it. So I haven't ran it yet since he made the adjustments, but uh, hopefully that worked. He just made right. some minor adjustments to it, to the uh, electronics. Right. Now, you got to fly your uh, yellow aircraft uh, F-15 today. Yeah. And how'd that work out? Oh, there? beautiful. I mean, uh, I think today was the fourth and fifth flight on it that I've had. Uh, before I had a few issues with it, with the landing gear and the brakes, uh, the, the second and third right. uh, flight when uh, I was in uh, Arizona at the field. And so uh, the weather was kind of crappy in Arizona the last few days when I had off, so I didn't get a chance to fly it again until I came out here. And, uh, boy, I think with that King Tech 140 in it, it's a yellow aircraft, 1-7 scale airplane. Uh, it's used. It's been through a few owners. Uh, I ended up picking it up, and it fan, it's fantastic. It flies right. great. Tons of power. goes fast. Uh, I have an ordnance package on it that I just put on for the first time here this last flight, and uh, it looks fantastic. It I'm, looks I'm very really impressed. Yep. It, it's, it's probably going to be one of my go-to jet, turbine jets, uh, because it's, 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 I have a, a aura, not an aura, but a, uh, a cortex gyro in it. And, uh, it's similar to the aura, but you know, in the jet world, they use the, uh, cortexes and a few other different types of gyros. But, uh, well, I have experience with the aura as well with, uh, many of my other airplanes, but boy, it just takes all the, the, the little 
you know, glitches and so forth, a little wobbling out of it, and has plenty of vertical. It looks scale. It looks just like F15. All the panel lines are in there, all the rivets in there. The ordnance look real. The gear looks like a real F15 gear. I don't have a, a cockpit kit on it, but I just bought one today. It wasn't very much. Got an awesome deal on it. And, right. Uh, I, I'm loving it. That's it's a good amazing. flying airplane. Yeah, it looks really good in the air. I like it. It's uh, you know painted in the camo colors, and it, the ordnance looks good on it when it flies. And you uh, clocked its speed today too, I think, right? Yeah. So I got a the uh, twelve channel receiver that I have in there. I also have an expander on it to uh, give me more ports for since I have a DX twenty uh, receiver, and also with that receiver, that twelve channel receiver has telemetry. And you can see battery voltages and temperatures and uh, altitudes, actually MSL and AGL. Wow. And uh, also uh, GPS ground speed. And with the ordinance on there, I was at 170 miles per hour. So without the ordinance, I'm thinking right around uh, 20 miles per hour faster. So about 190 um, I'll probably end up taking the ordinance off after a little while and, and, and clock it and see what it is. But I can take this little module that's from uh, Horizon Hobbies uh, Spectrum mm-hmm. and uh, have a piece of Velcro on it, and it just plugs right into your SI or telemetry uh, receiver. It's great. And you can see it real time, or you can see what your mins and maxes of all the values that you have telemetry right on your radio at any time or after you're done. That's pretty impressive, actually. Yeah, and those modules aren't really very expensive. They're like forty or fifty dollars, I think. Yeah, they're they're. Uh, I think they're right around like uh, uh, ninety or so for it. Uh, I ended up picking it up off RC Universe over at the trade boards, and uh, I got a really good deal on it. So I was very impressed with it. And this is the first GPS uh, telemetry system that I've had on any airplane. So I'm like, you know, dinking around with that, you know. Hit in the candy store and the right. toy. And sure. I'm like, great. Now another thing I got to mess with. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, we've got uh, some vendors here. VVM is here and Jet uh, Central's here. I think the Schwin Schwin Win guys. Yeah, something like that. They're here. That, as that's well, a though. turbine jet that uh, yeah. I didn't know anything about until uh, yesterday. In, yeah, they're a new entry, I think, into this turbine world. And then. Uh, uh, the um, who else is here? The uh, Tamjet guy, and uh, he's here with some stuff. Yeah, there's. Uh, I think one of the main uh, reps for Havoc, which is a big line of uh, sport jets. Right. And with the uh, the vector and thrust, and these things are just phenomenal. What they can do, you can hover them. You can do these flat spins. You can do tumbles. You can do a uh, pinwheels. I mean, yeah, the guy was doing going amazing. up and just like hardly even climbing up through just like maybe half throttle, and then all of a sudden he just takes the vector and thrust and just throws it all left or right rudder in there, and it looks like a pinwheel. It goes like two or three times around, comes back to the upright uh, hover and climbs out of it. Yeah, it's really amazing to watch uh, those guys fly this thing, and they they fly low to the ground, high. They do flat spins. They were up to uh, yesterday when we were here. They were doing those. Uh, parallel flat spins and it's just amazing to watch but these havocs are are truly amazing the the other ones that uh you're talking about i think are the Mef- mephistos i, I think, think that's yeah something are, like the that those are the ones that are doing the real 3d stuff but these havocs are huge they're um they're probably one sixth one fifth scale as well and yep. and they're uh they're big sport jets they're painted in all different colors uh we got a navy uh scheme in front of us we've got another one over here that's got like a bright orange scheme i mean they're really amazing they're really light wing loading and they land just like they're on a it's like a kite they just oh, yeah. come in and just float down the runway i mean you can touchdown. walk you can walk faster than things land yeah, exactly you know they, they come back and then they're so stable and but yet you can just give the coals to them and they go fast as they well are amazing yep and they do some really cool stuff too and then I think Brian's out here with his uh, big F eighty six, right? Or F isn't that what that is? F86? Yeah, I think I think it's a big F eighty six. And it's, that thing uh, is huge, too. Truly amazing. He went to Top Gun and won some awards on that as well here not too long ago here this year. So it's amazing. Yeah, a lot yeah, of money and a lot Brian, of time into it. Yeah, they've got a lot of time into that thing. Yeah, Wayne's been really working on it a lot too. I think every time I talk to him, Wayne's over his house. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, building something for him. Yeah. You know, nice exactly. to nice to own something and that beautiful. Yeah, it is amazing. It looks uh, all aluminum, uh, skinned, and uh, it's just amazing little airplane. It flies so scale, and it it also has a really slow landing speed. So I'm really excited to see those. Well, uh, we got a lot of uh, Panthers out here too. Those are uh, those little blue um, jets, the uh, Navy jets. Are they F nine Panthers? I think. Uh, yeah, the Panthers. Cougars and Cougars Panthers. And Panthers. I've got a couple of Yak 130s out here that are huge. Um, I, I'm, you know, for being my first uh, RC in the, you know, large jet rally, this is is overwhelming to me. Oh, yeah, it's overwhelming for me, and I've been doing this for, I don't know, my first jet was the Falcon 120 with a, a, a Jet Cat P120 in it, and I learned how to fly a little, it was probably a little bit too much and stuff to learn how to fly for the, you know, majority of them out there. You know, I had... 3D experience and and faster, smaller jets like the Habu and mm-hmm. so forth. So I got a good deal on it. You know, another used airplane a while back, about eight years ago, and and then um, you know I ended up getting the uh, Ultra Flash, which is you know over 200 mile per hour airplane. It's just it's a flash. It, it's super fast, it aerobatic. Super fast. Uh, it's just a speed jet, speed sport jet. So that was my second one. Of course, then I bought the uh, F-15, the scale jet, since uh, Spence has kind of bad influence on both know, of us. both of us, exactly. And, um, you know, he had his F-18 and his F-16 that he's kind of dinking around now, trying to get the center of gravity on right now so he can put a few flights on it today. But... Uh, yeah, even with, you know, I thought my airplanes were a pretty good size, uh, not, you know, eight foot uh, length. <laughs> right. And it just puts that one to shame, yeah. you know. But, you know, the F-15 is real scale. It's nice. It's affordable for the jet world, that is. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> but uh, some of these guys, oh, man. What do you it, think the most expensive jet out here is? Uh, Oh, wow. Uh, probably some of those twin engine uh, airplanes down there, the the super scale, uh, maybe the F, like the F 18s or, yeah. or or so forth down down the way. Well, Brian's F eighty six is pretty. Oh yeah, too, that's so. expensive. Uh, you know, saves them a little money on that, and it only has one engine in it. To that's com- true. You know, so which is good, but uh, a lot of time and devotion and a lot of expense in it, and he didn't hold back on you know cutting no. corners on it. Nope. But uh, beautiful airplanes here. Well, they have uh, the, the the coolest airplane I think I've seen, other than the B two, and that Hornet. Uh, the next coolest one is the F twenty two. Oh they yeah, have a large scale, probably a fifth or or even a quarter scale. That thing is massive. It's massive, and uh, it's a dual uh, turbine as well. And the guy is uh, scratch building it, and it's all formed, and it is truly amazing. It is unbelievable the detail that this airplane has for being that size it's just tremendous and i you know there's a couple of big large scale f15s out here and and um a couple of the guys down the way and i saw one i thought it was your si- the size of yours and then i turned around and saw another one and i thought it was an edf yeah and i come to find out the edf what i thought was edf is the exact same size as yours and the one that was sitting underneath the tent was like three times the size of yours right so, so it's very difficult to get you know a good understanding of the scale uh when you're walking around because you just don't it just doesn't make sense until you see somebody standing next to it or you know somebody carrying it or pushing it around it's it's truly amazing there's, yeah there's i mean really uh, big airplanes here. the pictures that you see that he, that mike has taken you really can't get a perspective no. <clears throat> unless somebody's standing next to it or so forth. But I kind of told him, I said, just, I have a ruler in my little box over here. <laughs> you know, a 12-inch right. ruler. I said, to get a perspective on these things, put that ruler before you take your picture. Yeah. Take, put a ruler on the wing or somewhere near it so then you can see the size of these aircraft. Yeah, it's just because they're massive. Because otherwise, you're like, ah, oh, you know, you have no perspective in a background picture. But when you have somebody next to it, <clears throat> and uh, or a ruler next to it, then you then you can like, wow, that is huge. Yeah, it's funny because uh, most of the guys that head up to the flight line, they actually just drive the airplane up there with their hand. 
they put it on the tail and just meep, move it up there because it's so tall. Yeah, and it's heavy too. Yes, it is heavy. So, well, Brian, uh, Brian's uh, little F eighty six that he has. Uh, I'm six foot one, and it comes all the way up to my chest. <laughs> so it, it's pretty big. I am. Um, it's amazing to watch, though. So, well, what do you say we uh, go out there and take a flight or two? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll try go to fly get uh, F again, or try uh, to get. Uh, I have an L thirty nine, by the way. Oh, that's right. That I just uh, picked up from who Motion was that? RC. Motion RC. Yeah, yeah, they're a new one. And uh, got it a few days ago, so I'm the very first one of the very first batch that came out, and uh, I got it on Tuesday, and I think it was Tuesday or yeah. Wednesday, and it's almost together. and uh, it's almost together. I been kind of neglecting it but i'm going to try to get it together and all the reviews says really good and the, the youtube videos on it and the build videos looks awesome uh it should go right around 105 mile per hour average that's amazing so i'm gonna I can get mike over test. here to uh put a help me put it together get it all set up i'm gonna put the aura in there and as my primary receiver and gyro uh all in one so I'll kind of simplify things and then uh, take it for a spin a little bit later on. Oh, well, good. Well, well let let's you know head back out the to the front line. And, uh, yep, we'll head back out there and uh, we'll talk to you here uh, shortly. Sounds good. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Park Flyer Podcast. Uh, I'm back with Spencer. And, uh, man, there are some awesome airplanes out here. There are. So... This event specifically, pretty much, they don't call it Best of the West for no reason. Yeah, no doubt. So there's a, a lot of museum quality models out here that um, not only do you get to look at them statically, but they fly, and it's, you know, it's really a cool part of the hobby. So it is a very cool part of the hobby. Got the big B2 out here. Yeah, I actually uh, just got done talking to uh, Barry. And uh, he, he mentioned the B-2 as well. I, I asked him what were some of the uh, airplanes he liked to see. But uh, what, what are some of the things that you think are really outstanding? See if they're the same. Well, the B-2s out there. Um, I have flown a Lanzang. Mm-hmm. Same people that make our F-16s, actually. Right. Uh, B-2. And the B-2 uh, is kind of an elusive bird. The threat on RC groups had about 70 pages of failures before... Uh, me and I think one other guy kind of had a breakthrough where we fit, figured the airplane out and got it flying well and normally. Um, but it, it took a lot of figuring out, and so did it, it did with Northrop as well. <laughs> right, yeah. I think they lost the first one, didn't they, or something like that. So, uh, so but I mean, I don't know. The, half the challenge is the chase, and that's part of the fun. And uh, sure. to try to, like, basically figure it out and get it flying well, is it, it feels like you've conquered it. So to see that fly, I have a small amount of appreciation, I guess, for what they've gone through, even though that I've only done a fraction of what they had to go through. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, but he was actually flying it and doing, like, show passes. That was impressive. With the drag rudder on the top wing open. So it was actually, like, slipping through the air. It was amazing. And uh, Right up until the landing gear fell off. <laughs> the what? A couple of airline pilots can't figure this out, right? Yeah. Is that a slip or a skid at that point? I don't uh, don't know for a B two how that works. Kind of, yeah, I know. Yeah. It but, doesn't have uh, a rudder, so how can it be either? <laughs> uh, yeah. It kind of does. Right? It's got drag right. rudders, but That's no, right. he was flying it basically slipping and like a slip pass. Right. And that was pretty impressive because, uh, at least with the foamy. That's about when you depart controlled flight. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this thing has about, I think uh, Barry and I were measuring about 12 feet or so. And uh, it was very impressive, him doing uh, not quite knife edge passes, but they were pretty close. Yeah. And uh, it was amazing to watch. What's interesting about that airplane, too, is I was over taking a look at it when he had a couple of the hatches open. He only, he only has two 100-size engines in there. Huh. And, I knew he had two turbines in there. for an airplane that size, yeah. you only have two 100s. Right. It is uh, it's kind of a testament to the efficiency of a flying wing. Isn't I know that, that when I have Zaggies, you could put a uh, you know a little three cell twenty one hundred sure. battery or whatever in a brushless motor, and the thing was like a rocket. Right. And it would glide forever. And the same thing with this. Um, the, when they come into land, he's at idle at probably twenty feet, thirty feet, and it takes probably from thirty feet, he can go probably fifteen hundred feet down the runway in a glide. That's amazing. Especially when it gets into ground effect. It's like the thing doesn't want to quit quit flying because you got this 12-foot wing with 
uh, four inches maybe a clearance, right, four or five right. inches of clearance right. underneath the airplane. So it really magnifies the ground effect, and um, it's kind of fun to watch aerodynamics in action. Yeah. It's like a field trip. It is. It is a field trip. This whole thing is a field trip. Yes. It is almost, I will be honest with you, it's almost overwhelming to me. It is. There are so many people here. We've got a couple of guys from Australia. We've got some guys from, I think they said Argentina yeah, or people somewhere. from all over the world. Uh, got some guys from Miami and Denver. I mean, they're all over. I mean, And, you know, in typical fashion... Spencer's great at you know shaking hands and meeting people, so we've met a lot of really good people here. Yeah, it's been interesting. Fun. That's a lot of fun. experts, um, and probably at least five to ten million dollars in airplanes. Yeah, it seems that way. <laughs> it seems. I'd hate to add it up. I would too. I I mean, just sitting here, I think just under this tent alone, there's probably a million dollars worth of flight. Uh, just on that end yes. down there. Yeah, Brian's yeah. in yeah, down Brian's. there. He put some solid uh, investment forward. Yes, he did. He has some really – well, he competes in Scale Masters, I right. believe it is, and the right. Top Gun. Mm-hmm. So really right. like world-class level detail on the airplanes and the size is always – I mean, if it's not really giant, he he's not all that interested. Sure, sure. So he has the biggest, most detailed – nicest look some of the nicest looking airplanes out here i mean there's a few people that give him a run for his money but he consistently that's his thing yeah and, I, and i'll tell you that just from a size perspective i'm six foot one and the tail of that uh, f-86 that he has over here comes mid chest level to me so i mean it's a, at least a five foot span off the ground i think yeah. just the tail section so and I think it's a 12 to 14 foot wingspan as well, somewhere around there. Yeah, bigger. Beautiful parts. flying airplane, though. Amazing. And the little skip down the runway, he flamed that thing out. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> so we're all sitting here watching, enjoying this thing flying by. and Which is beautiful, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. And we thought he had a gear issue because his gear wasn't down, but the doors were open. Right. And. He, he's in ground effect and getting ready to touch down, and we're all just, like, wanting to cover our eyes and cringe because what is probably a forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 model is going to land on its belly and yeah, it's going to tear, it, tear up. it up. And we thought he almost touched, but it turns out he didn't. And it just so happens that the gear comes popping down right as he kind of balloons up a little bit, and then it settles right back <laughs> on, the gear right within on the gear within half a second and, and lands normal and rolls out. I have to say the crowd went wild at that oh, point. So they were happy clapping, and cheering. Clapping. It and was pretty funny, though. So I we're mean, thinking that perhaps the gear got stuck, and and the you know little, well, little um, jerk of the elevator is what got it down at the last second. It was just dumb luck that it fell down. But we actually found out that he had a flame out. Yes, he flamed it out. And the mm-hmm. gear cycle on this airplane takes so long for a reason I don't really know um, that he had only put the gear or commanded the gear down when he knew he had the runway made. But it took that amount of time to get the gear down, and it and just so happened to where literally half a second before the airplane was done flying, touched it came down. down. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, they were. Wait, he was trying to hold it off as long as possible, and it popped out. Everybody cheered, clapped, and gave him a big round of applause. It, yes. was, it was pretty fun. Exactly. So well, that, that was, was good. Awesome. Especially yeah, that having was good. a buddy of ours, we don't want to see our our buddy's planes yes. get torn up because we like no. watching them fly at our local field. Absolutely. What other uh, what other airplanes do you think? Uh, there's this F-18 that's flying around. That thing is wicked awesome. The blue one? The blue one. The it's blue uh, one. kind of blue and grayish. It, it is, is a BVM. Plug and play. Plug and play, and I think it's a sixth scale or something like that. But it is a big, big turbine. Yeah. He's got like a 310 turbine in it, I think. Barry was talking about it. Um, just one? I think it's just oh, one, yeah. okay. Yeah. And then, uh, and then there's an F-22 that's over here. The guy that built the B-2 has an F-22 that's Yeah, so scale. he has this ginormous F-22, and it's, from what I understand, because I actually just bought a yellow aircraft F-22 kit, which the yellow aircraft is, an, uh, is not around anymore, unfortunately. Right. And the guy that owned it is choosing not to allow somebody else to come by the business. Yeah, I think that's it's kind of his bu- his baby and he doesn't want to see it go in a different direction than what he has envisioned, so he kind of just said enough yep, is enough. Just kind of yeah. let the hammer fall and and that's it. But anyhow, uh somebody was selling a second well, I shouldn't say a second hand kit because it's brand new, but a, a uh, yellow aircraft F22 kit which I happened to buy. 
So I have this heightened F-22 interest all of a sudden. And so there's this giant one that Barry from King Peck has out here. And it's big. It's impressive. It is impressive. Yeah. So it just so happens the guy that basically distributes all, I would say more than half of the turbine engines here in America, has all the bigger, biggest, coolest airplanes. So <laughs> I know. I don't Imagine how that works. Yeah, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> There's got to be a connection there somewhere. Right. Well, the uh, the good news about today, though, is that uh, you got to fly your F-16 this morning, and there was uh, some issues with it, I think. It's still nose heavy, but uh, while Barry and I were talking, I think you were back there moving the CG. So uh, Yeah, so that's the first thing I did. I got two flights on it back in Phoenix before we brought it out here, and I was really reluctant to even put it in the trailer because it is kind of a hog right now. It's it's doesn't By your standards. By anybody it, else's standards, it's, a swine. it's fine. Yeah, it's a swine. <laughs> But it's, you know, it's uh, some parts of it are primered. Some parts of it are the original scheme. It's kind of, right. you know, it's nasty a hodgepodge looking. hodgepodge of paint. Yeah, it'd have to be. It's, it's, a, it's a modern art masterpiece. It's, hey, you know. it looks good to me. But the air doesn't really care what it looks like. So the whole point was to bring it out here and to get some flights on it. And I don't know. I mean, we're out here to fly jets. So I might as well use the opportunity to get some, get some time on it and make some adjustments and yeah. The first couple of flights were I wasn't really all that wild about. I know the airplanes fly really well. Uh, they've been around for 20 years. And when I flew mine, it took everything I had to keep it under control. It was very unstable. Now, everybody's initial feeling is if an airplane's unstable, it's got to be the CG's too far aft, right? right? Everybody has pounded this into everybody's heads. But in, in actuality, I had the opposite problem. Um, and one good telltale sign was my elevator trim when I landed was way up. Right. Like I almost ran out of up elevator trim on my radio, mm. which only leads me to believe that it was super nose heavy. Well, that makes sense. So what I did this morning is move the CG back from the forward limit that the manufacturer recommends all the way to the F limit. I mean, all the way back. And I have found out through at least my flying style and that I like the further aft almost the better. I mean, obviously, there's too much of a good thing, but really most airplanes that, that I've come across, the manufacturers recommend a very conservative forward CG to help make them stable. But like I said before, you can't have too much of a good thing, and they do it almost to a fault. And if you have an airplane that you're kind of scratching your head about and you're not sure if you like the way it flies or it's right. a little heavy in the turns um i encourage people to kind of creep that cg back because sometimes it really takes airplanes especially jet style airplanes and mm-hmm. it just it brings them to life right so that was exactly my problem i moved the cg back an inch and went and flew it and i did that just by moving the batteries back luckily i didn't have to add any weight anywhere that's always the last resort sure and it was like night and day. Yeah, it looked now, good. It's silly because my landing gear stuck down the whole time. <laughs> but it Nobody was night noticed. and day, and I'm so much more happy with it. And really, if anything, I'm going to move it back even more. But I got two flights on it today. Um, it lands great. It flies great. So once we get back home, I got to source a actuator for the main retracts because the obviously the one that's in it now was not up to the task. So I, I'm going to try to find something that's a little more robust sure. and reliable and hopefully faster even. So right, right. I'm going to start digging around, see if I see what I can fit, because it, it sits beto- between two kind of structural rails in the gear. So unfortunately, I'm kind of stuck by size, but I think with enough digging around, I might be able to find something that will work. And all it does is run a drive screw. Like an Acme screw. Yeah, just a, it's like a worm drive. Yep. Yeah, so if so. any of you guys out there have the electric gear, it's just a blown-up version of the same thing, really. <laughs> right, right. And if I can get a better actuator, I'll probably be in, in business. I can get the gear Perfect. doors on it, the ones that we talked about molding, and then yeah. uh, a paint job. and Good to go. Yeah. Well, it'll look it'll, good. It'll look good. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Well, the flight looked good. I uh, happened to mosey out there, I think, when you were doing it after Perry's deal, but it looked, it looked really, really good. So... Well, uh, we are lucky enough to have a buddy of yours in town. 
I, I know. Think, uh, Mike drove down from. Actually, why don't you introduce him and we'll uh, we'll ask him how he likes the Jet Festival. Well, Mike and I flew foamies back in Phoenix and electrics or whatever, and he moved out to California to take a new job, and we were sorry to see him go. So what's cool is every time I'm in Southern California and. The fact that this is RC related adds a little extra incentive. <laughs> but he drove out today. There was some extra incentive out there. Yeah. You know, from but San, San Clemente. San Clemente. And he's here. So I want to welcome Mike on. Mike uh, Cuthbert, right? That's right. All right. Welcome to the Park Fire Podcast. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Well, uh, is this your first jet rally? First jet rally. So what do you think so far? Uh, it's mind blowing. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, this is, I'm still so overwhelmed. I mean, I really am. Every time I turn the corner, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, I honestly didn't know what to expect. I started looking into turbines probably two years ago mm-hmm. um, as kind of the next level. Right. Um, but now that I see it in real time, um, right. it's even more than that. Right. Yeah. It's this goes beyond my my expectations. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a lot of hardware here. Um, a lot of great people. A lot of cool stuff to see. Yeah. What uh, what what jumped out at you while you were wandering? Because <laughs> you were wandered around for a little while, didn't you? Yeah. I you I here. did a lot of walking. We left around. him unsupervised. He got to wander around. <laughs> Dangerous. Uh, yeah, actually, it is dangerous. Well, we held his wallet though. That was a good thing. Yeah. I was not so lucky. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a good experience because I'm just absorbing information. Um, I mean, I know this is something that I want to do. That sounds um, really familiar to my, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm hearing myself talk right now. <laughs> exactly. When I first like, you know, brought my stuff out and started flying with Mike out at the field and, and the same thing with me, when you look at these things at first, you're just like enamored. First of all, the first thing that comes to mind is I want one. Yeah. But then your brain starts processing, like, what's going on here and how do I get one, right? So it's... Yeah. Well, I spent a lot of time asking a lot of questions and got a lot of good information. You know, what do I get started with? How do I get yeah. started? Um, you know, it, this is a significant investment. I think, you know, looking <laughs> around, the, the least expensive, you know, entry level, I guess, option is, you know, it's $5,000. Yeah. Um, but... You know, it, they're also a lot faster, a lot more responsive. These are like, you know, almost the real deal, just shrunk sure. down. Right. So, yeah, I think um, I think I'm going to invest in a in an EDF, a fast EDF. Mm-hmm. Get used to it, understand the the physics of going 100 miles an hour. Right. You know, on an RC plane, which I you know I've been flying RC for a long time, but it's all it's been prop planes, and you know they don't. Go 30, 35, right. 40 miles an hour if you're lucky on a good day, right? Uh, so, yeah, get used to that and then, uh, you know, continue to do the, the uh, homework and, and pick up something, you know, for real. Um, it's really fascinating. I, yeah. It's, it's overwhelming. That's a good point with the transition between flying electrics, prop planes, and then going to EDF is yeah. that you... you Getting yourself out of trouble happens very quickly with a prop plane, right? You add power, immediately the prop starts turning faster and it blowing air over the control surfaces, blowing air over the wings. So you almost get like an instant parachute or at least a safety net. Sure. EDF is, is, plays an awesome role in basically bridging that gap because, yeah, the power is instant. You know, when you, ha- when you have, hammer the power on an EDF, you're going to get instant thrust, but it doesn't mean it's going over the wings yet. You have to wait for the airplane to accelerate before, you know, you can recover from stalls or get more control effectiveness or whatever it may be. And it bridges that gap because with turbines, now you don't get the instant power and you don't have a prop on the front. So you need to be that much more further ahead of it. So if you get into trouble, you've got about a f- sometimes up to a five, seven to eight second delay before help is on the way, you know, help arrives. So I think EDFs are a really good way to bridge that gap, just like yeah, I Michael mean, was saying. The last thing you want to do is move. put your $5,000 plane into the ground. Yeah, I mean, yeah, which we've seen one or two yeah. this weekend. Terra firma is never forgiving. Nope. So, exactly. That's, that's good. good observation. Well, so nothing's jumped out plane-wise. You just had walking around going, wow, i got to have one of those. <laughs> So, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, um, everybody here is talking about the B-2. The B-2 is phenomenal. I, yep. I just, I, I don't, 
it's probably not a kit. I'm assuming no. he built it from scratch, scratch which is impressive in Pop itself. Arf makes it, if you can believe it. Um, it's actually an Arf. Oh, it is an Arf. I mean, it's a loose, loosely used on loosely the term. Loosely used, yeah. But uh, Composite Arf, which makes Barry and I's flashes, and they make a whole range of composite airplanes, hence the Comp Arf name. But, yeah, the B-2 is actually in production, and you can buy one. That's crazy. I would have never thought. I mean, Isn't that crazy? I that was kind of, was crazy? Spencer's flash was pretty impressive. 230, was. 30, 40 yeah. mile an hour plane. Um, I don't even know how you keep up with it. Uh, but, yeah, I think um, a lot of F-18s, uh, a lot of T-33s, mm-hmm. uh, some, a lot of F-16s. You know, which yeah, are there are a ton of F-16s. All Super impressive, yeah. um, but I think you know. After asking a lot of questions, you know, I, steering towards the L thirty nine, which is a fast jet, but yet a forgiving jet right. and can fly slowly. Um, so you're not having to come in hot on your landing. You have time to react if you get a little crosswind and you're not going to get out of control and right. you know dump the thing into the into the ground so something like that i think is is probably where i'll start i think i was asking about these guys over behind our, our tent have a a bunch of these havoc planes which are yeah. i don't know who makes those but they're they're amazing too they're acrobatic uh uh planes but uh, come in really slow and then there's this these guys from uh germany with the mephisto now that was something else um that is amazing the he mephisto. <laughs> was basically hovering that thing and you know going vertical and then pinwheeling it and putting it into flat spins and almost just hovering it and then pulling out it was just i don't even know how he was doing it it's just fantastic to watch it's kind so, of one of the new facets of the hobby. You know, yeah. the jet hobby is, well, all of the hobbies is constantly evolving. But as far as, since we're out here talking about jets, uh, one of the first points you made, Mike, was the F-16s uh, being out here, that there was a, a whole gaggle of F-16s. What's funny about that is they're such forgiving airplanes, even though they're scale jets and they look really nice. Because of the way they have leading edge extensions and a delta plan form on the wing, they won't tip stall. Well, I shouldn't right. say never, but they don't tip stall. And that actually is a huge benefit to somebody that's new because you can get a little mushy, a little slow, and still get through it without, you know, the, the tip stall of death or it spinning right. or doing something right, nasty. Right, right. So everybody had an F-16 10 years ago. I mean, that was the go-to airplane for just a good all-around flyer that looked good. Right. You know, sometimes you have to sacrifice looks for performance, but... The F-16, as far as a scaled jet, is one of the exceptions. So they they blew up. They were super popular. And because I think they were so popular that people kind of kind of got burnt out on them. And we actually didn't see a lot of F-16s over the last 10 years or so or five years. Hmm. But like anything else, if it's good, it comes back. Sure. And this show, that I've seen more F-16s here than I have at a jet rally in probably the last, like I was saying, five, six, seven, eight years. So, with it being my favorite airplane, I'm pretty happy to see a lot of them yeah. in the air. It was nice to watch them fly. And, and they're all uh, Thunderbird schemes, or most of them. A lot of them <laughs> so are the BVM plug-and-plays, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's another thing that's changing. The building is going away. People want instant, more instant gratification or faster gratification. So, a lot of these BVM airplanes, their market right now is to sell you as close to a turnkey Airport right. air, airplane as you want, so you can you have different options. You can buy the airplane as an ARF. You can buy it with the servos installed, the gears in. You add your radio, or even ready to fly, where they literally they put the radio in, they put the turbine in, they do all the install. You program your radio, go fly the same day. That's their platinum. Yeah. That's platinum that's, delivery. Right. 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 And it never used to be that way. You know, BVM was always known for having the most detailed and really labor-intensive models, <laughs> you know, and now they're the complete opposite. Right, yeah, now they're just come get one, they pull it out of the box and go fly it. Exactly. Yeah, I was so, looking at their booth, and they have their, their gold level, which, right. as you were saying, Spencer, is, is basically it's, it's everything's ready to go. You just drop your turbine in, and right. you're, you're off. And then they have their platinum level, which is here you go, sure. go fly box. it. Right. Yeah. It's kind of a, a mixed emotions on it, to be honest. We talked a little bit about how, um, you know, 
more ready to fly op turbine options were coming out. You know, the potential of Hobby King coming out with turbines right. that were ready to fly and right. how that could impact our hobby on the previous podcast. Yeah, we know, talked about a that. A couple ago. Mm-hmm. And now it's happening in this scale where you're, you're buying a very nice airplane that's ready to go. So, I don't know, it seems like they're kind of taking some of the modeling and some of the, the building out of it, which, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. But it just seems like they keep cutting away at that and building and there's a lost art. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, for me, I don't know, you know, for the listeners out there what they think, but for me, I, I prefer to get my hands dirty because right. I, I then understand more about how it works. Sure. And if something does go wrong, you know, I can get in there and troubleshoot it you know rather than scratching my head because i didn't build it from the ground up you know i have to build it from the ground up but i mean getting in there and understanding what goes where and why and it really helps you to fine tune you know your machine and again it's 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 an investment for sure so well i think i think uh you know from way back when when you opened the box full of popsicle sticks and you know toothpicks and said here you go this is your plane and here's the plans you know, we've come a long way. Oh, big time. But, but the scale detail, I mean, the guys that were winning, you know, Top Gun and some of these really scale masters, they put so much effort into these models to make them look realistic. And now we've got guys that you open the lid of the box and it looks almost like it was sitting on the ramp at an Air Force base. Right. It's got all the molded rivets in it. It's got, you know, internal uh, servos so that there's no linkages hanging out anywhere. Uh, the pilots are realistic. Every the paint the detail, job is realistic. The, the details it, on it on. is amazing. I mean, and all of that, you know, basically boiling down to where now, what does the guy have to do to win Top Gun today? You know, do, do you show up with your own, you know, well, airplane I, that you built from scratch? Is it going to be as good as some of these production models? I mean, I, that's where I see. I, you know, I mean, I kind of understand where everything's going, but at the same time, it's like. I built planes before, and now I just want to go fly them. You know, I mean, I, I, when I was a young guy, I didn't mind building. But now that I get older, I just want to go fly, you know. And, and if I could go buy something and just slap the wings on and go out there and have a good time with it, I'm really excited to go do that. And if it looks like these things do, then that's even better, you know. Well, that's exactly why these ready-to-go or plug-and-play yeah. airplanes are becoming so popular is people have the same – feelings as you where they just want to get out there and go fly and have a good yeah. time and they don't really want to invest the time which you know it's tough you know we all have lives and we get busy and, well, and literally to be on that level true you know, i mean we're talking we're past hundreds of hours we're into the oh, thousand yeah, thousands, hours, thousands of hours, hours to go sure. out there and compete so yeah to have a really good looking airplane at your disposal is kind of cool you know it's a cool option well, I've, I've told this story before, but I, I you know, I, when I was in college, I knew a guy, and he and his dad built a, a clip, clip wing cub, basically. Mm-hmm. 11 years of gluing sticks and putting monocoat, all of that stuff together. You know, I mean, it was so, 11 years of him and his dad, his dad passed, and, you know, here I am, a young kid in college, and I'm like, oh, look at this thing. We got to go fly this thing, you know, and he's like, nah, my dad and I fixed it, you know, we built it, blah, blah, blah. I talked him into going out and flying it. Of course, he took off and crashed the thing and yeah. just destroyed it. So, you know, I, I understand now that there are a lot of guys that put that time and energy and effort into it to, to watch it, you know, go by, go bye-bye. And this thing here, it, you know, yeah, you just sunk a lot of money into it, and now you just kind of wasted all that money. But at the same time, I didn't invest half my, you know, 11 right. years of my life into building this thing. So I think some of that is... Wait, in, somebody spent 11 years working on an airplane? Yes. Well, oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> Spencer's 10 years on this uh, F-16. He's had it for 10 years. Not full-time, though. No, not full-time. You, know, you work but, on a little bit, like, you throw it in the right. closet. And Taking me back bit, to the days the of tissue paper and dope exactly. covering. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, you know, the thing is with that, too, is that technology has changed as well. Big time. Uh, I mean, you know, you, the injection blow molding and, and these layups where they can just lay up hundreds or thousands of these models in, you know, compressed fiber glass or, or carbon fiber. It's just amazing, you know, the details. We were looking uh, right across from us. There's a Yak-130 that uh, we were watching a guy detail. And just the, the level of detail in this standard model is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. 
and now they've got lights on them. The LEDs are all flashing, and the sounds come out. And the the you know on the EDFs, we were all excited when these little afterburner rings came out. Well, now all the jets have them too. Yep. So it you know it gives a level of reality, and and people just get the technology just gets better and better every year. So why not take advantage of that technology? You know? Anyway, I, I don't know. That's my feel. I, I still understand Spencer's part of it, and I I do as well enjoy getting in and get my hands dirty and kind of doing that. But he's right. I mean, I have less and less time because I work a lot, and then, you know, I, I'd rather be at the field flying. So do I spend all the time working or and, you know, building, or do I spend working and then come flying? And I don't know. You have to kind of balance it out, I think. So wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, it's uh, it's good to have you on the podcast, Mike. I know that uh, the the show is uh, is amazing here, and there's a lot of good stuff to see. And we'll turn you loose and let you go look some more. But uh, yeah, this has been a, a fantastic uh, uh, opportunity and experience. I'm I'm super glad I came out and yeah, well, good to meet you guys you. and good to see yeah. Spencer again. I was there was a little more again. incentive though for you long. to come out, right? Because there a little carrot, well, a little carrot. Yeah. There was a carrot besides dangling me in there. and my. That's Wonderful present. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you drove all the way at three and a half hours to get what? What did you wind up oh, getting here? Oh, foamy uh, 48 Yak. Yes, yak. the 48 Yak, yeah. uh, the um, 52, or 54, right? Yak 54. Yeah, Yak 54 E-Flight, the, the, yeah. the 3D version, the red the and gold one. You can't even one, get so. anymore. Can't get That's any right. anymore. Can't so get that one it's, anymore. It's almost, good almost good as gold. It, it is gold colored, by the way. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it almost good. Well, that kind of brings us full circle because we are the Park Flyer Podcast, and you can fly that in the park. So uh, as much as we enjoy spending time here uh, in the jet world, uh, we did have a little park flyer that did change hands there you go. Uh, as Mike got here. So we really, uh, really looking forward to that. Well, what do you say uh, we go out to the flight line and uh, take a couple more flights? We'll go fly them up, and then we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Absolutely. All right. We'll be back. You have been listening to the Park Flyer Podcast. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to your next visit. Please give our show a star rating and review. And feel free to email us your questions, topics, or suggestions to parkflyerpodcast at gmail.com.